All right, well, good morning again. Good to see everybody. Some of you are new here, so welcome and glad you're here. Um, I pray you'll bear with our sort of transition day back here in the building, and, uh, but it's been good. It's really hard to think of half of our year, nearly half of our Sundays that, belong, that our churches had were outside. <laughs> it's crazy. Wonderful. Blessing. Uh, I just want to thank the Lord for just for... Um, One, okay, we do have to be uh, clear here. 24 of the 25 Sundays were outside. The first few were a little bit chilly in May. Um, but all in all, we had one Sunday that we had to come here, which was just about three weeks ago. Uh, I think it was October the 2nd. Uh, kind of a practice run back in the building. Um, but we have so many events that we've been able to do this summer um, so many lives changed. We're just so grateful that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ can get proclaimed through, uh, through this ministry. And uh, I get to be a part of it. I'm so thankful. Praise God for his goodness. Okay, so one of the things about leadership is after a while you do learn and hopefully remember that everything takes time. It takes a process. And I'm learning to respect the process. Um, until we get to experience how something gets completed from start to finish, we really don't understand. Like you say, you're like, that should be easy, right? You know about putting on a Thanksgiving dinner for a family, if you've ever done that. You know, like it's all on you, okay? Yeah, everybody just shows up and, you know, voila, and sure, people oftentimes bring a dish or they bring something to share. But if you ever get to a, a wedding ceremony or... And all of a sudden, it's like, this place is gorgeous. Like, it wasn't like they just added water, okay? There was work involved. There were people. There was a thought process. Um, and I want to show you a little bit about the thought process that took place. Um, I appreciate Brother John uh, remembering to pray for those who've been affected by the hurricane and, and the whole, you know, that whole portion of the uh, Gulf, um, the West Coast there of Florida. Um, so over the last three weeks we were able to hear from Vicki Michaud, who represents Hope Builders. Vicki, with her tearful plea, says, I need to go back home. Um, having already done relief work off the, uh, on the, one of the little islands uh, in uh, Puerto Rico uh, called Vieques, uh, Vicki had, you know, kind of finished her time with doing everything she could in her power to respond to the need back five years ago when Hurricane Maria uh, came through and did a tremendous amount of damage. And then, you know, this was personal because she grew up and she, or spent many years, 35 years, uh, in uh, Fort Myers. And so now you've got this hurricane that's supposed to go towards Tampa, but winds up getting into Fort Myers. And I want to show you a couple pictures, not so much of Fort Myers, but I want to show you about the process. So Vicki gave the appeal a couple weeks ago, and you folks responded, okay? So here's the thought. How do you get a church to donate money, donate supplies, look at the list, and say, okay, they need tarps, they need cleaning supplies, they need this, they need that, and then all of a sudden our people start meeting, uh, coming over here over two days' time after they got the word, hey, what you can do, what you could uh, be a part of giving, uh, people started to show up in this window of time. I believe you guys were here from two to five uh, on Thursday and then Friday about two weeks ago. Uh, that was John and Tim. Uh, back up, uh, go back one slide or two slides. So that's, there's John, there's Tim. Uh, go to the first slide there too. The, okay, so this is all the stuff that got loaded into these bins. And these two captains, John and Tim, were on the receiving end of the kindness of people who got word that Vicki Michaud's raising goods to get to Fort Myers, okay? So this is, this is part of my message because I want you to understand the process. Well, you say, well, that should be easy. Let's just ship... Um, let's just ship all these totes down to Fort Myers. Well, Vicki says, I, I'm going to go down ahead. I may be coming back up to get these supplies, but I've got to go figure some things out, build my volunteer team. Meanwhile, we get these goods, and, and we got this. Now, go to, the, go to one of the pallets or the guys in the back of the truck there. Okay, so the one with the truck. So on Tuesday morning this past week, um, the totes, 10 of them left here packed, okay? These totes are full. They have supplies. They get food. They get everything that this church could do. We raised, I think, over $1,500 plus 10 totes of supplies. Now, how do you get them from where? Yes. 
How do you get them from Wareham to Fort Myers? Well, you start making phone calls. What's it going to cost for us to send a pallet down there? $3,000 was one quote. Okay, so then, by the grace of God, here, see, this is the power of our, our, of our Wednesday night prayer meeting. We start to say, Lord, we don't know how these needs are going to get met. Okay, we have 10 totes that need to get to Fort Myers, and we're, we want to find the most economic way to do that. I get a phone call because we got people who actually do call up and hang out with us on, they can't maybe be here in person, and we usually meet right in that back corner where you people are, and right by the table, we make a circle, and we probably get eight or 10 people in here, but we pray about the needs that are ongoing in our church. Um, just, we, you know, there's nothing highly, you know, we don't share like the real nitty-gritty personal stuff, but if somebody says, you know what, I, I've been diagnosed with cancer, and I need God to re- show me, like, what did you want to do through this? Or, or okay, um, we've got 10 totes now in the building, and Vicky's down in, in uh, Fort Myers, and I, it's not going to be really convenient for her to come back up, but what do we do with this stuff that all these nice people and kind people just gave money, and we got to get them out of the building, right? we got to get them down to Fort Myers, and so we pray, and then somebody's on the phone call who's part of our church, and she's watching our live stream, Barbara. Um, and she said, uh, my brother works in shipping, but um, you're going to have to call him and come to find out this guy was awesome. This guy was like, he was amazing. He just, he was so responsive and he's like, and, and like there's this whole logistics plan. He's like, well, do you guys have hazmat materials? I'm like, I don't think so. You know, what do you got? You know, you've got to make sure you've got to, we've got to fill the process. We got to, we got boxes to check. We got to make sure that whatever's leaving from Wareham to Fort Myers, and we're responsible for that. We've got to take an accurate accounting of what's in these totes. I'm like, you know, you just don't think it's like, okay, the tote's going to go from Wareham to Fort Myers. Well, how that's going to happen? That's going to be a process that this whole thing's going to have to go through. There's a point to all this. Trust me. Okay. So, they, though the guys leave here last Tuesday morning, four totes in the back of the, you know, the cab, and then these additional totes, and two smiling face guys head out to Fitchburg, and then they go to the dock, let's go to the loading dock, and they meet Keith and the other guys who received these totes, and now they got wrapped, and guess what it's going to cost to ship these off to Fort Myers? $400. So... But understand that there's a, there's a process that you can say, well, that, that should be easy, right? Just do it. Well, yeah, you go to UPS and you say, hey, what's it going to, I brought one tote into UPS, like one of the heavier ones. How much is it going to cost us to send this one tote? 75 bucks, okay? Do that times 10. Now you're at 75 times 10. You know, you're, you're, getting, you're getting a much higher price. And then it's just, then you've got to go through all this difficulty. So all that to say, there's a process. And as we look at the book of Hebrews today, I want you to realize that there is a process that God has used, that God has put in place. It is his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and how Jesus comes to you, how Jesus comes into your life, and how God wants you to understand to the extent of the process that it took God to come to you personally. Isn't that awesome? Because there's a process. There's logistics here. There's a very, very precise, very specific plan that Almighty God had that this is so amazing that what God could do so that you would have salvation, so that you would know that you have salvation. Not that, oh, that salvation thing's a good idea. No, I know that I'm saved. I know that I'm ready to face Jesus. Why? Because I'm just so good, (laughs) right? Even though some of you think that, okay, and I, won't, I don't want to shatter your opinion. Okay, that's not the point. The point is, I'm good because of Jesus. Because what he's credited to my account, what he did for me. And I get to receive the righteousness that my Lord provided for me in Christ. Now, how do I receive that? Like, you just go get really busy and you ask God, like, for all these things to say, like, God, I'm really serious. I'm so sincere. No, he says, you just humble yourself as a little child and you, see, you understand what I've done for you and I will give you salvation. But you need to understand that you are in need to be saved. That's what the scripture says. You need to be saved. You don't mess with this deal. Don't mess with this idea. Well, I think, I hope, I, I hope I'm good enough. You will never be good enough because what you're talking about here, when you start to think that way, is that the holiness of God is some sort of like gradable scale. Like, well, God just sort of grades on a scale. Like if we somehow kind of just keep a, a good little chart going and we have good outweighing our bad. Now, I would say this. 
It's better that your good outweighs your bad. Okay, I'm just going to say, a lot of people who have bad in their life, they pay the dear price for that, but you're not, we're not saved on the basis of our works that we have done, our righteous deeds. We have been saved because the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for us on that cross. And people say, well, Pastor, this is like just so offensive. Well, it can't, it, it's not offensive. This is the love of God expressed for you to this world. And Jesus is alive, right? And Jesus wants you to worship him and know him because no one loves you the way he loves you. No one loves you the way he loves you. Who would have done that for you? That's why when you let Christ just have access to like every part of you, like I, I'm just done being me. I just want you to be in me, the hope of glory. That's what scripture talks about, that he's the hope of glory. He's the one that gives you the impetus to actually have the authority to come to him. Like when you talk to God, you're talking to him because you know that he's for you. As they song, you know, uh, that we, uh, um, our God is greater, right? Our God is stronger. You know, why do we say that? Because we know it's true. Why do we know it's true? Because the Bible tells us, right? What can separate us from the love of God, right? Can distress and turmoil and hurricanes and all that. No, but don't forget that God's way more concerned about you than just your physical body. He's so much more concerned about what's on the inside of you. You know that God has the power to give you a brand new body. And Jesus is the full proof of that. And those of us who come under his offering under his gift, under his sacrifice, we're promised a brand new body <laughs> like his that doesn't get sick, doesn't get COVID. Tim, who's in that picture there, Tim on the right, I believe is since the last week has tested positive for COVID. Tim has been through a war over the last 15 years of health, in and out of, of hospitals. But he says, Pastor, you know what he said to me this morning? I want to show you what a heart, how good God is through a man who suffers, right? Tim is doing every, he wasn't even breathing all that well on Tuesday. He's like, Pastor, I can drive my truck to Fitchburg. John, did you guys have a fun ride together? That was awesome, huh? You guys, the, yeah. after, yeah, so you, you did, did all the talking? talking? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's cool. Um, no, Tim's awesome. Tim lo loves to share the God, and God brought him up. Okay, I just want to show you a little quick story about Tim. Uh, Tim comes up from Virginia about two years ago, or give or take, and he decides he's going to treat himself to an ice cream over at Perry's, and Tim sees the, the, uh, t the newly tent in 2021 installed. He's like, I'm going to go there tomorrow, and uh, it was love at first sight. Tim says, I walked in. You guys were singing the same songs that I was singing back in Virginia. And pastor, you preach like my pastor back there. And it's like, I'm here. And for the last two years, this guy has given of his time and his love, but not without difficulty. But he knows his hope. His like whole body thing that our bodies, my wife can tell you, she went through a real long battle with leukemia. And it's like yucky. And, and we w went through that. But if God be for you, who could be against you? Right, honey? That's right. And look at her. This woman's amazing. Just amazing. God to God's glory. When, um, since, since what? There's going to be some appreciation going on a little bit later today. Uh, make sure you appreciate Beth because I could not do this without this amazing woman right beside me. She's awesome. Praise God. Uh, somehow we got to get into the Bible. Um, let's do that. All right. But so the process of the of what I watch these guys go through to get the, the merchandise from Wareham to Fitchburg. Now it's on the way to Fort Myers and Vicky was just like bawling your eyes out and she's like, you have no idea that the, the, the goodness of God and just the way he oversaw my, I, like, I, I don't even know how all this, like I wanted to do so much more but when I got here, it was just so overwhelming in Fort Myers. It's just like this, the destruction and she's sending me pictures and I'm like, I, I don't know how you process through that, right? Except you know that God is with you, right? Because God says don't put your hope in this world and, uh, and it can all change in an instant because Jesus is good and Jesus knew what he took on when he came to this earth and last Sunday, I introduced this overall theme called Our High Priest for ever. Jesus is the great high priest. 
What does that mean? He is the ambassador from earth to heaven on your behalf. And there's not one need that you have as a child of God that he doesn't want to intercede for you and enable you to understand, like, my goodness, Jesus, look what you've done for me. See, the more you understand the magnitude of the ministry of who Jesus is, the living Christ, not some dead, crucified, no risen Jesus, he's risen from the dead. Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He's not here. He's risen just as he said. So that's why it's like, and five, the scripture says 500 people witnessed him resurrected. And then just before he's taken, after he gives, he gives of his, holy, his promised Holy Spirit to the disciples in the upper room, right? And 120 of them are like all speaking in these different languages because now the gospel is going to be going out into the entire world so that people in Wareham, Massachusetts can understand that Jesus loves them. Isn't that cool? That's how cool this is. That's how awesome our God is, is that he wants us to know what he's already done for us. That's why the scripture says it's a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of a living God. If what? If you don't have the right sacrifice. And who's the right sacrifice? Jesus, his son. It's not your good works and all that you think you should do. I get that. We should be striving to please God with good works. Okay, that means that all the stuff that comes out of our life, but not to replace what you, Jesus, take, like you should just take a breath one day. One, of the, one day, when you're like looking at that person in the mirror and you're like, my life, some good and some not so good. But Jesus, but Jesus for me. And see, this is the great high priest ministry that he offers. It's not some guy in a confessional booth, and I'm not trying to slam anything here, but somebody, see, the Bible says there's a priesthood of believers. What's the priesthood of believers? You now have opportunity to come, come into the presence of God because what Christ did for you, you can be a representative of your own life to Christ himself. You have the right now to come into his presence this is, you, you'll, you'll sometimes hear, the, you'll hear this thing called the priesthood of the believer. That means that you have access. You have access because Jesus gave you access. And here we look at, um, I'm going to just take a look here at um, Hebrews chapter 5, beginning, and this is the second half of the chapter. We went through uh, the first six verses last Sunday at the tent, if you remember. Um, so, the, this is, there is some, definitely some need to give a little bit of background here. So in chapter 5 of the book of Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews is explaining the ministry of the high priest that would have been understood in the Old Testament. If you go all the way back, those of you who read your Bible, want to know your Bible more, there's going to be a book in there called Leviticus, right? That, that book means a lot to Jewish people. That... All of those Old Testament texts that you could look at, whether they be Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, you're like, some of that stuff like really hard to understand. You can understand it, but you need to understand the context for which it was written. God chose a group of people called the Jewish people to reveal his power to this world. Were they perfect? Nope. <laughs> they get a lot of issues? Yep. And they did, and they demonstrated that they didn't always do what was right, even though God gave them like specific instructions. You do this, I will bless you. You do this, you got problems. And, but he never stopped loving them. He never, he's, the Bible says he's married to the backslider, okay? God is committed to them. The world can say, oh, the Jewish people, and they can have anti-Semitic rants and all this stuff. The Bible says, I will bless those who bless thee. I will curse those who curse thee. Don't be a part of a group that criticizes the Jewish people. I get it. Guess what? They're human like you are. And you and I, you think like we would do all, like I would do so much better. No, you're not, not necessarily. You got the same sin nature that they have. God happened to elect this nation. And guess who, who would come via this elect nation? Our Savior. Who now saves, as Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The Apostle Paul, it is the power of God unto salvation for the Jew first and also to the Greek. Guess what? You're in the Greek camp, okay? You're in the Gentile camp. You're in the Gentile realm. There's like two groups, the Jews and the Gentiles, other nations. The whole one sacrifice by Jesus is sufficient to save everyone. 
will everybody be saved and not spend an eternity away from Jesus? The answer is no, because many people are God. Let's just say, if you look at the book of Revelation, there's gonna be a very difficult time coming on this earth that really reveals the heart of man, that most of us, most of us, I would say, have come to God kicking and screaming, okay? To some level, it's like, uh, do, I need, do I really need God? We're not asking you to be religious. That's the, that's, that's the other baggage that gets assigned to you asking Jesus to save you. This is not a religious decision. This is a personal decision that re, it's required by Almighty God who sent Jesus to die for you. And when he died for you, he paid in full your debt. That you and I are bankrupt. And we can't pay that. It takes perfect, precious blood that flowed from our Savior's body on that cross that, as the old song says, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Tim, you just look like you're ready to break out in song here, brother. I love it. And so we talk about the precious blood of our Savior because that's why when we serve communion and we have these little cups of grape juice going around, it's the reminder of his blood that was shed and his body that was broken for us on that cross. Oh, but Jesus didn't stay dead. No. Three days later, after being placed in that tomb, he's there. So here we are, verse 7. Who, this is speaking about Jesus in verse 7 and the rest of the chapter, and we'll read that. Who in the days of his flesh, speaking of Christ, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries, in tears to him, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by all things which he suffered. In having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him called by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have become to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So that is Hebrews chapter 5 and 7 to 14. And hopefully you got a handout on the way in. These will be up on the screen as well. We'll just touch on these for just a couple minutes. The scripture says here in Hebrews chapter 5 that Jesus suffered on our behalf. And when you think about, we talk about this whole process of getting totes from Wareham to Fitchburg, Fitchburg to Fort Myers, they just didn't show up there. There was a process. And to bring salvation to this world, it cost God his own dear son so that Jesus would be the one that forever is going to be worshipped for all eternity because of what he purchased for you, for you and for me. See, when you worship God, you don't, you're not wasting one breath of your life. You're putting everything, what you're really doing is reconciling your, yourself to the purpose that God had for you. And like we all look at like people's lives, it's like, why are they so messed up? Well, why? Because there's a sin principle in there that wants to take them down. And it's working overtime. It's working overtime. Sin is a corrosive force in the entire human race. I'm telling you, I barely like to like look at news headlines anymore. I'm like, it's just crazy. Like people that I, like these are, these would be my like, people like if I was in some of these cities like I would I would know these people like and they're just suddenly like they're taken my mom is in Andy are here today and they have a house cleaner one of the ladies in their house was like recently like murdered by her 
either her husband or ex-husband or I'm like, yuck. Like what causes this stuff to happen in people? Because there's a sin factor and they never learned how to get that under the control of Jesus and, and recognize like, wow, this thing is like, th- there's a powerful force. And, and I've seen kids who grow up and like, they love God like, and then all of a sudden they don't love God anymore and they have nothing to do with God because nobody ever taught them to the, to the level that they should have taught them that I want you to know something. Just because you take Jesus Christ as your own Lord and Savior doesn't mean that Satan's not going to come knocking hard on your door and putting stuff in your head sometimes and causing decisions to be made that like you're at this precipice of a decision and you're like, I'm not going that way. I'm going to pull a Joseph here. I'm exiting. And sometimes what happens is we don't pull the exit. We just keep going. And then we're like, we're in a relationship that's not good for us. And all of a sudden it's like, what was I thinking? And, and, and I'm not, listen, I, I'm not judging anybody here. But I want you to know something. Just because you are a Christian, it may mean that you're only able to take in milk and you should be able to take in solid food so that you're not just playing this game like, uh, listen, your life as a believer should be under the control of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit is now your power. It's not just like, oh, what I decide to do. I want my life under his power because guess what's going to happen? You've got a reward ceremony coming or lack thereof. And that's called the judgment seat of Christ for the Christian. That's not a judgment. If you're heading to the judgment seat of Christ, and I say this with my utmost appeal to you, you want to be there. And how you get there is you did the right thing on earth with Christ. He's mine. And I'm not crazy. <laughs> See, some people get crazy. They become crazy, not, you know, nutty Christians, and, and, but they wind up doing a lot of damage sometimes, and they, they just spout off, and they don't learn how to get their whole brain in their heart under the control of the Spirit's guidance in their life. You realize God wants to make you like the best you. I love that. He wants to make you the best you. The best you in crisis. The best you under pressure. The best you when you're just like, I can't do, like, I can't do this one more day. Okay. Yes, you can, with Jesus. He, the Bible says, if he be for you, who could be against you? You are not a victim. You're not stuck. You may feel stuck. Just saying, (laughs) many times, I feel stuck. Yeah, right, because I'm stuck in my own head. And I got to blow that thing up, right? Like the thought process and like, and, and, and make sure like that's not godly. That's not crazy. That's, you know, I'm, I want those thoughts under the control of the Holy Spirit. But our thought life is so important of what we empower that to be. And the word of God informs you how to think correctly. And so Christ suffered on our behalf. Who in the days of his flesh when he had offered up prayers and supplications with them and in Christ. Do you, I want to bring you back to something. You guys won't have this up on the screen. But I want to just share with you. If you remember in Matthew chapter. Let me just see if I can. Okay, here we go here. In Luke chapter 22. This is right before Jesus dies on the cross. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. So he's, he's with his disciples, and he now goes, he goes off to pray. This is when he knows he's going to the cross. So when we understand the process of what Jesus went through for us, we should never forget that it was brutal. It was completely brutal what he went through. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. When you read Hebrews chapter 5, when when it talks about the feminine prayers of Jesus, this was the difficulty that he endured for me. That's what 
is so important about this that Christ endured this on my behalf. And I love what the Apostle Paul points out in the book of Philippians. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. See, that's why when we, we, we preach that Jesus Christ is God in human flesh. He's not a God. He's not a little God. He is God the Son. He is one with the Father. He's one with the Spirit. There's three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Jesus is God in human flesh. And that's what the book of Philippians teaches us. That he made himself of no reputation. In other words, you think about everything. Remember what Jesus says? I I could call 10,000 legions right now to halt this whole thing. But how would the scripture be fulfilled? In other words, he's talking about right before he goes to the cross. So Christ went to the most agonizing experience that a human being could ever. And how do I know that? Because when Jesus is on the cross, God the Father literally turns his own back from his son because all of my wickedness and sinfulness is now placed on Jesus. And when his blood is pouring off that cross, that blood takes away sin so now when i see jesus when i think about like who my savior is i'm interacting with the the greatest picture of love for me and he takes me as i am he's already saying i cleaned you up i washed you you're white as snow and i belong to him and the bible says that my, his righteousness has been credited to my account it's there When God sees me and he sees you in Christ, guess who he sees? He sees his own dear son. Therefore God highly, this is in Philippians, therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is day's coming. This day is promised, it's coming. And what's God doing? Why is God still letting like, all the earth stuff happen? Because he loves people. He loves them. And he wants them saved. And he wants them to believe. That's why we as a church have the privilege. So when we do an outreach next Sunday, it's not because I love Halloween, okay? Just saying, I don't. I really don't. But I love the people that come to adore on Halloween. And I want them to have some opportunity to hear about Jesus. Or they come to an event like that because they need to know about Christ. And so, yeah, is all this stuff easy? No. Like, we could just all stay home, okay? Now, if it's raining, we'll have a different, we might have a different uh, plan here. I'm hoping it's not going to be raining next Sunday. And we're going to have an awesome time over there. Okay, number two, Christ was perfected on our behalf. I'll just share these in just sort of summary. Having been perfected, Jesus Christ being perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Called by God as high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. This Melchizedek name that you will see in the Old Testament represents an eternal priesthood that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of. Remember, Abraham interacts with Melchizedek, and Abraham just, he, like, he's, he's, he wants to offer this. He wants to, he wants to offer Melchizedek voluntarily 10% of his wealth. Like, I, 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 I see who you are. See, remember what Jesus said about Abraham? Abraham saw my day, and he was glad. See, Abraham, back in the Old Testament, saw Jesus, knew that this is an eternal Savior, This is an eternal offer. And Melchizedek is this picture when Abraham offers him all of the things that Abraham had, even a percentage, he did it voluntarily. That's why if you give 10% of your money to any local church, you do that voluntarily. You do it because you want to, not because I have to. Now, we have a lot of generosity in our church, and I praise God for those people who give 10%. I praise God. But is it required? Is it like God mandating that you have to give him 10%? If you don't do that from a, a generous heart and from a want to, remember what Jesus says, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Do it because you love him. Can't take this call right now. No idea who's calling me. Okay, all right. That happens.
All right, pastor's human. Okay. Um, so Christ suffered on our behalf, having been perfected, to whom we have much to say. In other words, we got so much to tell you about Melchizedek, but well, you guys can't. And it's what he's saying to these group of Hebrews is that you guys can't even understand this. Can you imagine being the person that you were given like tons of wealth, tons of everything, tons of like, like everything, like your whole life, you just got it all. And then like you're at the, at the moment, you're like, I don't know who I am and what I have. That's the, that's the point here. That's what, that's what the, um, the point by the writer of Hebrews is like, do you guys realize who you have? Do you realize what Jesus did for you? And that's like this important distinction that uh, the writer doesn't want us to forget. It's like, just take him, take Christ, he, and he'll teach you more, but you've got you've to avail yourselves to him. And I guess the final question that I would just leave you with today is, have you obeyed Jesus? Number one, are you saved? Do you know you're saved? Amen. Amen. Awesome. That means that you've asked Jesus to Christ to come into your life and save you. A lot of people exit this life every day. And I would pray that everybody in this church would absolutely know I'm ready to exit because I've trusted Christ to save me. I know what Jesus did for me. And I want to live the rest of my days loving and serving him and doing everything he wants me to do so that we can, so when I see my Savior, I can only hope that I hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your rest. Jesus says, amen. He said, I am coming and my reward is with me. And that's what... Um, that's what I want, and I want that for you too. Let's just pray together, because it's 11.20, and I, I just can't wait to hop into that room after several days of being eliminated from it, and you're all invited, and let's pray. Father, thank you so much for loving us, and we do want to obey you, Lord. And it's, it's sometimes we're, we're terrified about those thoughts. And I just pray, Lord, for any terrified heart here this morning whether they feel scared or unsure of how to make that next step with you, I pray that they would take the first step, that they would look to you and say, Jesus, I, I need you. You're the only one who loved me the way you loved me. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to, by faith, I'm, I'm receiving this into my life. And I want you. I want you. I don't want religion. I want the person, the Savior, the lover of my soul who is with me. Jesus says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Thank you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. And I pray for anybody who is either discouraged this morning or feeling un unclear, that you would comfort them and strengthen them that you would bring them to a place of the next step for their life, Lord, and thank you for the uh, wonderful privilege of being connected to this church. I thank you for all these, my brothers and sisters, and I pray for them that you will strengthen them, bring them to maturity, Lord, that they would let that process take place in their life. And I just pray for my, this congregation, Lord, right now, for the needs that are here, for the lives, Lord, that need a, a, a fresh touch from you, maybe a glimpse of your goodness and grace once again. And Lord, if there's a sense that we feel separate from you in any way, would we just go with what the word says? That for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have ever lasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. Thank you, Lord. Again, comfort these who are here this morning. Bring them a new level of confidence in serving you, and may we be able to grow from just milk consumers to meat digesters, that we would feed on this word and we would become so strong that as the Apostle Paul says, none of these things move me. All of life's circumstances, all the things that can come at us, 
that we would be strong in you because we know who has us. In Jesus' name, amen.